Hey, what's up guys? Dave here from CNC 3D. Today we're going to be going through getting started with your new Sharp CNC kit. So this video is designed for people that have already gone through the mechanical and the electronic assembly and you've had your licensed electrician come out and do all of the necessary wiring to get your kit up and running. So the first thing that we've done here is we've installed our CNC 3D Commander software on this PC and what we're going to do now is we are basically going to go through and run through the basic steps to get your machine set up ready to cut jobs. So the first thing is you can find the CNC 3D Commander software located in folder 5 on your CD zip file that we provide. If it does ask you for any updates, please get those updates as we often put through important fixes to the software to make it better for our users. So let's quickly get started here. This is the main window of the Commander software. So what we're going to do now is you can see that you've got a COM6 appearing in here. All we've done is we've connected up our machine via the USB port to this computer and we can see that it's come up with a COM port. So we're going to connect up to this machine now. And as you can see, it's found our machine here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to check that our limit switches are working. We can see down the bottom here that XYZ on the limits is currently in red. So what we'll do is we're going to go up here to the peripherals tab and we're going to change our limit type to normally open. Sometimes if they do appear in red, you'll just need to cycle this to the other option. And if we hit update peripheral settings, we can see that our limits over here are now all green, which is good. So what we're going to do first, we're going to check to make sure that we've definitely wired our limit switches to the correct place. So we're going to go over and hold the limit switches down. And then what we're going to do is just make sure that the correct light lights up. So first we're going to check X and then we're going to check Y and then we're going to check Z. Okay, so we've just gone through and checked our limit switches. So X, Y, and Z are definitely performing as expected. If you notice that when you hit a limit switch down and a different light lights up, you just need to check your wiring for the limit switches. The easiest way to swap that around is just by pressing down on the little white connector and swapping the respective cords around until you get the right combination. So now that we've got our limit switches working as they should, let's go through and actually get the machine set up. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to check to make sure that the axes are definitely moving in the correct direction. So for safety, what we're going to do is we're going to set our distance over here to five millimeters. You can just manually type that in and we'll leave our Z distance to five millimeters as well. Is we're going to hit on the X plus here and we're going to see if the X axis moves to the left or the right. If we hit the X plus button here and we move to the right, then our axis is definitely correct. So let's give that a go. And as we can see, it definitely did. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check our Y axis is correct. So we need to be a little bit careful with the Y axis because we need to make sure that both motors are moving at the same time. This is why we're keeping our distance here really small to five millimeters just to make sure that it's definitely going to be right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit Y plus and we should expect it to move away from us. So let's do that now. And as you can see, it actually moved towards us. So this is a really easy fix. We just need to go into the axes tab up here and then we just need to do the opposite of whatever the checkbox is. So in this case, it's ticked. So we're just going to untick it and hit update axis direction. Now we're going to test our Y axis out again. So if we hit Y plus, it should move away from us. And now it is, which is great. 
Now the next option that we have here is we basically just need to do the Z as well. So let's go ahead and make sure we set up this Z. So we'll just go Y plus and we're expecting it to go up. And it is, which is great. So it looks like our axes are now set up correctly. The next step from here is we're going to go through and set up our soft limits for our machine. So in order to do that, we'll go to the peripherals tab. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to enable homing. Now we'll tick that option in here and we'll have a look on the right hand side and just make sure that your settings are these settings on the right hand side. These settings seem to work the best. So the homing pull off is three. The homing debounce is 250, the homing seek is 1000, and the homing feed is 50. So what we need to do is be very careful when we run this process. We need to make sure that when we try to do the homing cycle, it will raise the Z to its highest position. So it will do that first. If when you hit this home machine button here, you notice that your Z axis is going down, we'll just need to very quickly hit the emergency stop. So let's just go ahead and see whether or not our axes are set up correctly for homing. And if not, we'll show you how to correct that very easily. So let's go ahead and do this now. And so that is going up as expected. And then now it should do the X and the Y at the same time. And it's going the wrong way. So we'll quickly hit our emergency stop. And then now you'll notice it goes into an alarm state. So we'll just quickly hit this unlock button here. And we know that the X axis was definitely moving to the right, whereas the X should actually be moving to the left. So we'll just tick invert homing X and then we'll hit update peripheral settings. Now the next step here is for us to make sure the Y is definitely moving towards the front of the machine. The front of the machine is the side where your spindle is located. So your spindle should be facing you. So let's just hit home machine again. And hopefully our X should now be moving to the left and our Y should be moving to the front. Once again, if it's not, make sure to quickly hit the emergency stop button here and then unlock and then do the inversion and try again. So let's just give it a go. So Z is working as expected. And it looks like X is working as expected, uh, but our Y is moving backwards. So let's hit the emergency stop here, and then we'll hit unlock. Now what we're going to do, we're going to invert the Y homing as well. So now that we've done that, we'll hit update peripheral settings. Okay, so let's give it a try now and see if we can get our machine to home. Okay, so Z is complete, X is complete, and now Y is moving towards the front of the machine. Okay, perfect. So now we have completed our first homing cycle. So the next step from here is we do recommend setting up soft limits on your machine as opposed to hard limits, as we find that soft limits can actually cause less potential vibration issues where you may get false triggers from limit switches. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out now how to do soft limits and how to enable them successfully. So the first thing that we're gonna do at this stage, we've just homed our machine. So we are going to find out what the absolute travel limits of our machine is. So the easiest way to do that is now that we're in our home position, which is our zero position, is we're going to zero the job coordinates out. So we'll just hit zero job. And now what we want to do is we're going to change our distance. We're going to do X and Y. So we're going to change our distance to 100 here just to make it quicker to go through this process. And we're going to jog our machine to the furthest possible point at the rear of the machine that we can go. So let's just move it. Let's just add a little bit more speed here to make this a bit quicker. Okay. 
And now that we're getting close to the rear of our machine, we're just going to reduce our travel to 10 millimeters just to make sure that we don't collide with the rear of the machine. Now we're getting quite close to the rear of the machine, so let's drop it down to one millimeter and repeat the process until we have about one or two millimeters of clearance to the rear of the machine. Okay, that looks good enough for us at this stage. So what we need to do now is we just need to take note of this number here on the y-axis. So we have 483 millimeters appearing in here. So in our y-axis maximum travel, we're gonna put 483 in here. Now the next step is for us to do the x-axis. So we're gonna do the same thing that we've just done. We'll just change this to 100. And let's just jog our machine until it goes all the way over to the other side of the machine with about one or two millimeters of clearance. Okay, we'll drop this one down here now to 10 millimeters. And as you can see, we're pretty close to the edge of the machine at this stage. So the number that we recorded for the X is 290 millimeters. So let's put 290 into this value here for the X maximum travel limit. Now with our Z, we typically like to put this at about 120. So we'll just change the Z to 120. You just need to keep in mind that the soft limits will protect you from potentially going too far on the X and Y axes. But due to the Z axis potentially having an end mill stick out or potentially having a piece of material underneath it, it can be quite difficult for the Z to actually be able to stop you from say driving an end mill into your job. So we're gonna leave this at 120 and then we're gonna hit, oh sorry, first thing we'll do, we'll enable the soft limit option as well. And then we'll hit update peripheral settings. Now we've gone through and set our soft limits. So what we're going to do at this point in time is we are now going to home our machine again. So let's just go ahead and do that. Okay, perfect. So now our machine has rehomed itself in, back in the home position. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to test to make sure that our soft limits are working. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are now going to try to ask the machine to travel to its absolute maximum limits plus a little bit more. So if we have a look here at the Y maximum travel limit, we can see that it's 483. So one would assume that we have 483 millimeters of travel, but in actual fact, we have 480 millimeters of travel. And the reason why is this homing pull-off value is once your machine hits a particular axis, it will press into the switch and then it will debounce three millimeters off the actual switch. So our maximum travel in this case is actually 480 millimeters. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask this over here to move 500 millimeters and we'll see what happens when we hit Y plus. So as you can see, we've immediately gone into an alarm state. And if we hover over this alarm, we can see that it says G code motion target exceeds machine travel, machine position saved. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hit the emergency stop and then we're going to hit unlock. Now, if we ask the machine over here to move 480 millimeters, which we know is our maximum, and we try to run it, let's see what happens. And as you can see, our machine has moved to its furthest possible distance away on the y-axis. So we've now gone through and we've basically set up our limit switches. We've gone through and we've set up our homing. And then we've also now gone through and enabled our soft limits. So at this stage, your machine is pretty much good to go. Let's just double check our x-axis here. So as we can see, it's 290 millimeters. So we know that it has a maximum travel of 287. 
If we put 288 in here, you'll notice we've immediately gone into an alarm state again. So anytime you do get an alarm down the bottom here, the first thing to do is just hit the emergency stop and then hit the unlock button to go back into an idle status. So let's just change this to 287 instead and we'll ask the X to move. Okay, perfect. So now our X has moved to its furthest possible place. Now, every time you do turn your machine on at the start of the day and you do connect up your USB cable, you do need to make sure that you home the machine every time. So we'll just hit home machine and we'll let it complete the homing cycle. The reason for this is the controller needs to know where the homing position is in order to set a reference for how far the machine can actually travel. So we'll just let this process complete and then we're ready to start carving our first job. Thanks for your time today, guys. I really hope this helped somebody and potentially get you started in the wonderful world of CNC. As usual, we thank you for your support. And if you have any questions relating to this, please feel free to reach out to us on our Facebook page, give us a call, or come and join our CNC 3D Playground group on Facebook. And we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. We do have a great community there, so please just go ahead and ask any questions you may have. And hopefully, either our team or somebody else will be happy to help you. Have a good day.